Howdy folks, welcome to part two of our little iRange X multi-protocol module review. In the first part, we did an unboxing and we looked closer at the module itself and we successfully bound a couple of uh, aircraft to it in PPM mode. And we left off in that video being unsuccessful in binding this little eSky helicopter. So this video is going to be how to hook it up in serial mode. Faster serial communication connectivity of these things is possible on radios that run OpenTX, such as our Horus here, or ER9X or ER9X. And as I mentioned in that first video, uh, this is done by ensuring the yellow dial is in the zero position. And when you plug it in, you want to make sure the green LED is off, just as it mentions here in the manual. Um, using serial connectivity does have some significant benefits in the long haul over PPM. Uh, the RF protocol and sub protocol selection is much easier. You're not using the dial. It's done directly in the menu of the radio system. And you're not limited then, of course, to the 30 position dial knob. Uh, you can bind through the menu on the radio. You don't have to use the bind button. So that's a little more convenient. You can also range check through the radio. And probably the best feature for some is going to be the ability to enable two-way serial communication for telemetry. So if your receiver or model has telemetry, there's a good chance you'll be able to receive it with this and then um, send that info to the radio so you can view your telemetry. The downside to serial, as I also mentioned, is you will likely have to update your radio firmware to the latest version. And if you hate that procedure as much as I do, it can be nerve-wracking. So let's not procrastinate any longer and see if I finally brick my radio this time or if I'm able to dodge a firmware foobar. So we'll go into the radio and first confirm that we even need to uh, download the, multi or the new firmware. This might already have multi-protocol enabled, but I don't think it does. So I'm just going to get back into that simple little four-channel helicopter that we were using yesterday. It's the little MCX. We'll select it. Release. Low rates. And Predator, we'll the model Predator. set up. And again, you go down to your RF selection. Okay, so again, you want to make sure the internal RF is turned off. And this is where you find out if you've got multi protocol enabled on your radio under the mode. So we've got PPM, and you just dial through all the different uh, external RF options. So we've got the PPM, uh, no multi. So we've got to update the firmware. Nice. To update the OpenTX firmware, there's two ways to do it. One is through the SD card, or the other way is through the USB port. Now, you, I do it through the USB port using OpenTX Companion. I don't do this often enough. I don't enjoy doing it, but I find using Companion is the easiest way for me. But do whichever way you like. Again, radio has to be turned off when you plug this in. And we're using the bootloader driver. You should hear your computer recognize the device. If, it, if you don't, it means you either don't have the uh, bootloader installed or perhaps your USB cable is not a communicating cable. There's lots of tutorials online. I'm not going to get into all the different ways you can update firmware. I always go to the OpenTX University website whenever I need a refresher. I find that's got the best, most concise information. So now that we've got that plugged in, we're going to go into the computer and companion. So like I said, OpenTX University, this is my main go-to whenever I'm having difficulties. We've also opened up OpenTX's website, and I just checked in my radio. I'm running version 2.21 of OpenTX, and we're going to be installing 2.23. Now if you wanted to find out what all the updates were, when you click on those, you know, first it gives you just a brief summary, warnings, and then it says all the main changes since the last firmware. And if you want to see if your computer is actually recognizing uh, the bootloader, you go into your control panel, go into hardware and sounds, go up to device manager, click on that, and then go down to the universal serial bus devices. And the last one that was plugged in, assuming your radio is plugged in and it's reading it, will show the STM bootloader. So we know the radio is communicating fine with the computer here. So we should be able to download the firmware, no problem. So let's go into OpenTX Companion here. 
and it should tell us if it needs to update to the latest. And there it does. It says a new version of Companion is available, 2.23. Would you like to download it? Yes, we do. So we'll save that. This just takes a few minutes. Fast forward. Now it's asking if we want to launch the installer. Yes. Agree. Next. Next. Install. So we've just updated the companion to the newest version. And what we're going to go, we go into this little gear icon in the top. And you could name your radio. I've just got it called my radio. Now this is really important. Make sure your radio type, you pick which radio type you, you have. And one of the reasons I didn't have that multi-protocol is under the build options, I didn't check it off. So when you check, so make sure you check the multi-module off. And you want mode two. And then default channel order. I don't really think this matters because in OpenTX, of course, you can map your channels out when you're creating your model. So uh, I'm just going to keep it throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. Um, I don't think it's going to matter. So we'll see. And we want to offer to write firmware to TX after download. Application settings, you normally don't mess with any of this. But again, others have done tutorials on this, so you could look at those. But that's what we're going to do. And we're going to download firmware. Says the latest. Uh, and here you could name it something else. Uh, I'm going to keep it just as this name. So we're going to save it. So multi module. Again, now we're going to replace it. Now I should mention, if you haven't backed anything up, you want to back up all your radio files. And that's you can do that all in Companion here. Again, I'm not going to get into that. Other people have covered it. Uh, do you want to write the firmware to the radio now? Yes, we do. So it's going to show us 2.2.3. Write to TX and keep the fingers crossed. Okay, and this takes a few minutes. But you should see this screen come up and there will be a status bar. Now, right now, whatever you do, I don't want to touch anything. This is when I'm so scared. If something happens, if the USB cord comes out, if the power goes off, yeah, you'll brick the radio more than likely. I think there's ways to bring them back, but I'm always so scared here. So, yeah, don't look at it wrong. Don't breathe on it wrong. Be absolutely still. <laughs> and we're going to fast forward through this. Okay, when it's completed, this is what you'll get, a flashing done. I always get this no valid DFU suffix signature. I have no idea what it means. It doesn't seem to bother anything. We will close the window. Oops, I guess we have to uh, close this first. And now the moment of truth. Um, we'll just eject the bootloader. Safe to remove, so we'll unplug the radio and turn it on, see what happens. Now the real moment of truth. This is always the scariest, turning it on after you do a firmware. Update. Oh, keeping the fingers crossed. Oh. You turn me on. Switch warning. Oh, that's such a huge relief. Normal mode. Throttle release. Low rates. Rudder low. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to go into the system here and check what version of firmware we've got. And there we go. We've got the new 2.2.3. So that's good. And more importantly, let's go into our model setup and scroll down to the RF settings. Did I go too far? Oh, I guess I did. There we are. So internal RF off, which we want. External. 
So what we're going to want here now, instead of PPM, we're going to want to see hopefully that multi showing up. And there it is. And then these are all your different protocols. I'm just scrolling through them. A lot of them, if they've got auto binding, you'll see the binding comes up right away. But the list is extensive. And not only that, let's go into... Uh, the only thing that's not that great is they're not in any type of order. Not in alphabetical order or anything. But here's DSM. And as you can see, you've got all your different um, sub-protocols of DSM. So you've got DSM-2 at 22 milliseconds, DSM-2 at 11 milliseconds, DSM-X at 22, and DSM-X at 11. So your sub-protocols -pro are over here, your main protocol is there. So a lot easier to select your protocols going the serial way. So try the Hudson real quick. That's the easiest one to bind because it auto binds. So it's in bind mode. The little LEDs are alternating. And in the radio here, we'll go back into multi. And we'll go to that Hubson H107. It's bound already. So that one works. Let's try this was being the bugger. And I noticed in here that, where was it? eSky. There's an actual eSky 150. So let's plug her in and see if this works now. Okay, the green bind is flashing. So here's where you can bind. Not showing up, hopefully it is. And you can also do a range check, but we'll hit the bind button. Nope. So it still doesn't like it. So obviously the new version of the eSky V2 has got a different protocol than what we've got in here, at least with this version of the module. I assume this is the module module version, V12.0.22. Uh, so we'd have to go into GitHub and maybe see if they've got the new firmware for this one. A little bit of digging though is it doesn't look like it's going to work. It's time to see if we can bind the little T-Rex 150X. Uh, I could not bind it to the DM9 module with this. So now we've got the multi-protocol module and we are using the serial connectivity. So first I'm going to try to bind it to Spectrum because I've got a little uh, Spectrum, well it's an orange, but it's a DSM-2 uh, orange receiver on here. And that's what I was flying, that's what I've been flying this with my JR radio. It's the only reason I'm keeping that radio still actually. So we're going to see if this works. So to put it in bind mode for Spectrum, we have to hold the bind button in and we plug the battery in. Yeah, I don't know if this is showing up on the camera, but the little orange uh, LED is flashing on the receiver there. So the helicopter's in bind mode. And we're going to put this into bind. So again, we've selected DSM-2, um, 11 milliseconds or 22 milliseconds, shouldn't make a difference. And we'll hit bind. Yes, it has. Just took a little while, but... Oh, that's awesome. So. Right there, um, yeah, so I, I'm going to recommend <laughs> this module right now just on that. Uh, I've been wanting to fly this thing with this radio for over a year, so I'm so happy. But let's try to see if we can set it up to the Futaba receiver, which is built right into this thing. And if we could, if we could bind it to that, then I can totally eliminate the spectrum, the little spectrum satellite, and the wiring, saving a little bit of weight. 
Well, for the life of me, I can't get it to work in um, SFHSS mode. I've tried everything I can think of. Um, I've gone into the 150GRS app, of course. I've made sure to select the Futaba SFHSS receiver option. Um, there is no channel movement when I try to bind. Um, hold the little bind button in. Oops, can't do that while it's bound to the GRS app. So, holding it in. Green LED is flashing. I've tried holding it for a long time. And it just won't bind. Uh, tried playing with the throttle, of course, with these things. If you don't have the throttle at the low enough position, it won't uh, it won't go into bind mode. So I've used ex I've put extended limits on my throttle channel. I've dialed it right down. You know, I've dialed the trim down. Trim center. On uh, you know on my channel outputs, I've definitely got my full range of throttle. You know, this is was the same on the uh, with the spectrum, so I can't see that being an issue. But I did even dial it down further. Nothing seems to be helping with that. Uh, what else? Oh, and then there was also this RF frequency fine tune, which you have to do with the uh, F or the SFHSS. And I went on GitHub and I looked at the procedure, and they say to you know dial it up by 30 or 40. And try it. If it doesn't work there, try another 40 or 30. So I went all the way up to 120, and then I also did negative. So I did minus 40, minus 80, minus 120, still nothing. And then the idea there is if it did work, if it did bind, what you'd do is you'd find the lowest setting that it would bind at and the highest setting, and then you'd use the mid value. But as it turns out, I don't have any settings. If anyone wants to make a comment, um, I know people are flying this thing with the multi-protocol module, so there's obviously a way to do it, but I can't figure it out, but I don't care. I'm just happy I can fly this. I'll just use the, uh, the Spectrum DSM-2 in it. It was working great with that. So the only fail on these modules was the eSky stuff that I've got. Everything else binds fine. And as a result, I'm probably going to be able to sell my DM9 module off along with my JR X9503 radio now. But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep these a while still. I don't know what the range is on this module yet, so I, I want to test fly it. You know, once I'm comfortable after a month or two, then I'll know definitely how, uh, what the range is like. Everyone says the range is great. You know, I fly some big planes with this module, so I am getting out there, but certainly not doing, you know, beyond line of sight stuff. All in all, super happy with it, and definitely worth uh, while upgrading the firmware and going to the serial communication. Uh, but if you don't want to and you want to use it in PPM, it seemed to work fine for most of the stuff. Cheers, folks. Happy flights.